Ever catch yourself staring at the screen during a movie, like totally captivated by some insane visual effect? Oh, absolutely. Those moments are what make movies so magical, right? Totally. Like that crazy, realistic CGI dragon in a... All right. Or those massive explosions in superhero films. Yeah, you can't help but wonder how they do it. Exactly. But here's the thing. Behind all that visual wizardry is a whole industry, and it's facing a challenge that's way less glamorous. Mm. A lack of diversity. Mm. We're diving into the world of VFX today with this article from Topic Room's VFX. Ah, great source for VFX news, by the way. Right. It's like the go-to spot for everything visual effects. And this piece, which came out a couple of weeks ago, really digs into this issue of inclusivity in the industry. And it's an important conversation to have because this isn't just about the what of the problem. Right. It's about understanding the why. So yeah, let's deep dive into this. Absolutely. And it's worth noting, this is an opinion piece. So, you know, every viewpoint comes with its own perspective. Precisely. And as we unpack these ideas, let's make sure we're looking at them critically right. Absolutely. Context is key. So the article jumps right in describing VFX work as this thrilling, high stakes world. Which it is. You're creating movie magic, pushing boundaries. But there's a catch. Yeah, there's always a catch. Yeah. Long hours, intense pressure, constant deadlines. It's a lot to handle. It sounds intense. It can be. And what's interesting is that this environment isn't unique to VFX. You see these same patterns in other demanding fields like tech or finance. That's true. They all seem to struggle with diversity. Exactly. It makes you wonder if there's something deeper going on, right? Like, these industries are built on a system that makes it harder for certain groups to thrive. Yeah, it's like there are systemic barriers in place. Precisely. And when you look at the numbers, it's hard to ignore. Yeah, the statistics are pretty stark. They are. The article mentions a 2021 study that found only 22% of VFX jobs are held by women. 22%? Wow, that's already a really low number. It is, and it gets worse. When you look at leadership roles like VFX supervisors, that number plummets to a measly 5%. 5%. That's incredibly low. You're right. That's not a pipeline problem. No, it's a whole different structure. It suggests that even if women break into the field, the path to leadership is full of roadblocks. So how do we explain this disparity? Well, the article tackles one of the big elephants in the room head on the gender gap in VFX. It straight up calls the industry male dominated and points to a pervasive issue, unconscious bias. Right, those subtle, almost automatic judgments our brains make based on stereotypes. And we're often not even aware we're doing it. Exactly. And it's not about accusing anyone of intentional discrimination. It's about recognizing that we all have these unconscious biases that can shape our perceptions and decisions. And these biases have real world consequences, even if they're unintentional. Absolutely. Take hiring, for example. There's been studies that show that even when resumes are identical, those with more white sounding names are more likely to get called back for interviews. It's these subtle, often invisible biases that can really stack the deck against certain groups. It's like this invisible force field that's hard to pinpoint but has very real consequences. Exactly. But unconscious bias isn't the only thing the article calls out. It also brings up the VFX industry's reputation for its overtime culture. Apparently over 60% of VFX professionals are putting in extra hours regularly. Wow, 60%. I get this often unpaid. Unpaid. Yeah, according to a VFX voice survey. So it makes you wonder, how does this tie back to the diversity problem? What well, comes down to who can actually afford to work for free. Right, that's a really good point. When a huge chunk of your workforce is constantly doing unpaid overtime, it creates this system that disadvantages people who might not have financial security or a strong support system. Right. And let's be honest, those are often women People of color individual from less privileged backgrounds. Yeah. They're the ones who get squeezed out by this expectation of constant unpaid overtime. And it's not just about the money, right? I mean, this expectation of being constantly available, always on. Right. It has these ripple effects that go way beyond just the paycheck. Absolutely. When we talk about systemic issues, it's not just about outright discrimination. Right. It's about those seemingly neutral policies or practices that end up having a disproportionate impact on certain groups. Right. And this overtime culture in VFX, like the article points out, it's a perfect example of that. Right. Because it creates this environment where those who can work around the clock, often those without caregiving responsibilities, right. they're the ones who are seen as more dedicated, more valuable. It's not a level playing field. And that leads us to another layer of this whole thing that the article really dives into parenthood. Yeah. Or more specifically, motherhood. Right. Trying to have kids while also working in VFX. It's tough. The article compares it to 
juggling flaming torches while walking a tightrope. And I'd say that's a pretty accurate description. Right. They're not exaggerating. Not at all. The long hours, the unpredictable schedules, the constant pressure. Right. It's tough for any parent, but for mothers. Right. It can feel like an insurmountable challenge, especially when you consider the lack of support systems in place. And the article is very clear about this. It yeah. basically says the VFX industry just isn't set up for mothers. It's true. And it points to pregnancy as this particularly vulnerable time. Yeah, when women take time off to have a family, they often struggle to re-enter the workforce. Right. It's like they've suddenly become outdated just because they took time to raise a child. Yeah, that's crazy. It's like this weird catch-22. You're expected to have a family, but then the industry punishes you for it. Exactly. It reveals this fundamental disconnect between the demands of the industry and the realities of many women's lives. Yeah. Motherhood is often seen as this liability, like, it means a woman is no longer fully committed to her career. And it's these deeply ingrained biases, yeah. both conscious and unconscious, that need to be challenged. It's almost like the system wants women to choose. Right. Like it's either your career or your family. You can't have both. And that's just not acceptable in this DNA. Exactly. Speaking of changing norms, remember when everyone was talking about remote work like it was going to solve everything? Oh yeah. Remote work was supposed to be the great equalizer. The solution to all our diversity problems. Right. And you'd think an industry like VFX, where so much of the work can be done digitally. Right. You'd think they'd be all over it. Exactly. But as the article points out, it's not that simple, is it? Not quite. While remote work can offer flexibility, it's become pretty clear that it's not a magic bullet. Right. And in some cases, it's actually blurred the lines between work and home life even further. Yeah, it's like you're always at work even when you're not. Exactly. Definitely. And that makes it even harder for people, especially parents, to switch off and recharge. It's like the office is always there in the background even when you're trying to have dinner with your kids or something. Right. And those blurred lines often lead to longer hours and increased pressure. So it's almost like instead of promoting work-life balance, yeah. remote work is actually making it harder to achieve. In some ways, yes. And the article makes a really important point about this. It highlights how remote work, while potentially offering flexibility, can also end up exacerbating existing inequality. Right, it's not a level playing field. Exactly. So those who already carry a disproportionate share of caregiving responsibilities. Often women. Yes. They might find themselves even more stretched thin when work invades every aspect of their lives. So instead of being this great equalizer that everyone thought it would be, yeah. remote work might actually be widening the gap. In some ways, yes. And it just goes to show that simply implementing a new policy or technology right. it doesn't automatically solve these deeply ingrained societal issues. Right, it's not a quick fix. Not at all. We need to be really mindful of the potential unintended consequences and make sure that any changes we make are accompanied by structural support. So things like affordable childcare options. Yes. Flexible work arrangements, a culture that values work-life balance. Absolutely. For everyone, not just those who fit a certain mold. Yeah. It makes you think, doesn't it? We get so excited about new technology and the promise of a brighter future. Right. But sometimes it feels like the systems we're working within just haven't caught up yet. It's like we're trying to build a house on a foundation that's full of cracks. Yeah. You can try to patch it up, but at some point... You have to address the foundation. Itself. Exactly. So where do we go from here? We talked about a lot of heavy stuff today about the VFX industry, this world of incredible artistry and imagination. It is an amazing field. But it's also grappling with these really complex challenges around diversity and inclusion. It feels like a lot to unpack. It is, but I wouldn't say it's hopeless, not at all. This article, while it doesn't sugarcoat things, does offer some hope. No, that's good. It emphasizes that change is possible, but it takes a collective effort. We all have a role to play. So it's like hitting the reset button, right? Yeah, in a way, yeah. Acknowledging that the current system isn't working and being willing to rebuild it from the ground up with inclusivity as a core value. Exactly. And that starts with changing our mindsets. We need to challenge those deeply ingrained biases that we've been talking about. Unconscious bias. All, all of it. It's about creating a culture where everyone, no matter their background, feels valued and respected. And where people who have traditionally been marginalized. Right, those who haven't had a voice. They have a seat at the table. Absolutely. And not just as a token representative. Yeah, they need to be equal partners in shaping the future of the industry. Precisely.
Because when it comes down to it, a diverse and inclusive VFX industry isn't just about fairness. Right. It's about unlocking this incredible wellspring of creativity and innovation that comes from having different voices and perspectives. It's about the stories that get told. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Imagine the amazing stories, the incredible worlds that could be created if everyone had the opportunity to share their unique vision. It's about recognizing that those jaw-dropping visual effects that we love. Right, the things that make movies so magical. Yeah, that magic comes from people. And when we embrace diversity in all its forms. Yeah, when we make the industry truly inclusive. We're not just making VFX more, just we're making it more creative, more vibrant, more reflective of the world we live in. A thousand percent. So next time you're watching a movie and you're totally blown away by some incredible visual effect. I know, I do it all the time. Me too. But let's take a moment to think about the hands that crafted it. The artists, the creators. And ask ourselves, what would the world of movies look like if those hands reflected the true diversity of our human experience? That's a powerful question. I think it would be pretty spectacular.